what helped me to not be afraid to fail is that I'm looking at it like, okay, what am I going to learn? I get curious about what I'm going to learn, not scared about what could possibly happen. I change it to, okay, I'm going to be curious about the new experience, the new lesson that I'm going to learn. How am I going to grow today? What's going to happen for me to know better so that I can do better? So change it from, I'm afraid to fail to, I'm curious about what I'm going to learn. Say that with me. I just thought of that on the spot and I like it. See, congratulate myself. <laughs> Excuse me, can I please talk to you for a minute? What up, girlfriends? And to everybody else, what up, YouTube? So, welcome back to another Hey Girlfriend visual podcast. Today's topic is how to build self-confidence. And so, I just want to say before I start, like, this shirt. So, you, you can't, I was trying to get it all in the frame. But it says, self-love club. I thought it was too cute. You go with the what I'm doing today, you know? But I got this off of Shein and earrings off of Shein as well. So just thought I'd throw that out there. Because a lot of y'all be asking where I get my stuff from and all of that. Oh, my lipstick. I want to shout out this black-owned business. This is Gloss Index by Lay Cosmetics. Shout her out. I've seen this on TikTok. It's in Chocolate Chip. So this is what's got on my lips today. And I thought it was so pretty. I put... A brown shade underneath but enough about how it looks but just want to throw it out there real quick because a lot of y'all ask questions all the time so there you go so i gotta take a deep breath let's get into self-confidence i know i did one on self-esteem but self-confidence is a little bit different i'm gonna go over the definition of what confidence is first so Confidence. Now, it's the feeling or belief that one can rely on someone or something. Firm trust. And it also goes on to say it's the state of feeling certain about the truth of something. A feeling of self-assurance arising from one's appreciation of one's own abilities or qualities. With knowing that that's the definition... And we're going to go in and we're, I'm going to today, we're going to talk about, first, we're going to talk about just regular self-confidence. I'm going to get into body confidence a little later, do a small segment on that at the end, because as someone that's dealt with having to be self-confident about her body, I thought I can throw some good tips in there too. So stick around for that at the end. But first, we are going to get into how to build self-confidence, why you may not have self-confidence or why you may lack it or where it may be not where you want it to be at. And how to get it there. So let's get right into it. So one of the key things to building confidence is accomplishments, which comes from getting shit done, basically. And but what if you don't have the confidence to even make moves to try and to get shit done? Because everywhere I looked, um, usually I come up with notes on my own, but I do like to back up some notes with like some um, good articles that I find to tell you where I found it. And y'all, I couldn't find really that many good articles on it. Well, I take that back. They were good, but I didn't feel like they really got it. So I had to dig deep in myself and think about how I built my own confidence up and shed some light on a few things that maybe stopped me from being having the highest self-confidence that I could have. So we're going to get into all of it because it's like I kept finding it, this definition going around or this, this um, word going around with self-confidence is about accomplishments. But I'm like, of course you get confidence from actually completing accomplishments and things like that. But what if you're stuck to where you can't even complete the accomplishment because you're not confident enough to believe you can. And so you don't try. So that happens a lot. So we're going to touch on a lot of things. It's going to get a little deep, but that's me. <laughs> so we're going to get into some underlying reasons why you may lack self-confidence and why you can't just get shit done and to go forward. First thing could be that you're feeling shame about you or any part of you. So I found that shame 
really, really blocks us from being our full selves. And it's because we're ashamed of certain parts of ourselves. Maybe actually tucking away certain parts of ourselves is how we survived in the past and when we were trying to get through things. But now that we're older, it's like that shame is still there. And so it makes us lack self-confidence. We need to get certain things done. And going on about that, I wrote notes. Y'all know me. I got I got ADHD. I got to take notes and I got to read them. So don't mind me. <laughs> and so when you're ashamed of who you are, it can be difficult to feel confident in who you are. It can cause you to not have the self-assurance component that comes with having self-confidence. And so... I want to talk a little bit about shame. This is something that you're going to have to work on yourself. And you can start by journaling things that you feel shame about. And then I want you to go back and figure out where it came from and why. Why do you have this shame? Is it because of what someone else said about you? What someone did to you? What someone has someone made you feel? And know that now that you're older, you don't have to use that shame so much anymore. Or you can break through it, whatever it is. You got to figure out what that is. Like I can sit here all day and have a whole different podcast about things that we're ashamed of and how it makes us basically create a shadow self. And so some key things when it comes to dismantling shame, I want you to do not only the journaling part, it will also be helpful if you just really, really, really take the time to be present is what I'm trying to say. Like, be more present and realize that who you were then and how you were taught to be then doesn't necessarily have to be who you are now. Like, I know for me, a personal example that can help you, back in the day, I would never do the shit that I'm doing now. <laughs> this is what I'm just going to put it out there. Me being on camera, me having a platform, me just putting myself out there, I would have never ever imagined well I used to imagine it but never thought it could be possible I used to dream of it but I didn't think that it could be me because I was too ashamed because people made me feel ashamed for how I look people made me feel ashamed for my body people made me feel ashamed for being different being a little weird um talking too much talking too fast all kind of things I felt so ashamed of myself and who I am that I took that away and so now as I'm getting older, I built a platform and I remember on Instagram, it was just like, you know, tweets and words. I, couldn't, I didn't have to show my face. And I knew I wanted that was my purpose, but I was scared. So I slowly started kind of coming out into my purpose. And that's what you got to do. You slowly got to. It's like think of like a turtle in the shell that's ashamed and scared. And so you can peek a little out and see how it is, start building, start growing, start healing the parts. And then you peek a little more out once you heal some parts and peek a little more out until you're fully out of the shell. And you realize it ain't so bad out here. And that's how I felt. I came in like, it ain't so bad. I can be confident and I don't have to worry about people knocking me down. It may be some, but I've realized that those people are projecting. And so I use that in my head. And it makes me to be confident because I'm like, I don't have to be ashamed anymore of anything. And now I realize that there's like plenty of people that like me and get me. I was just stuck in them people from my past, like maybe high school students that were childish anyway. My mom that had her own issues back in the day. And I let all, I, I soaked that all in. But I don't have to. I don't need any of that. I don't need my shame to survive anymore. I can thrive. So... Think about what you're feeling ashamed about. Think about why and work through that. Slowly start working yourself out of it. That's how you build confidence. That's one way. Let's get into the next way that could be an underlying reason why you lack self-confidence. Lack of trust in self or just lack of self-trust. This comes from not doing or practicing. Sometimes you have to do the shit even if you're scared to do it. Some fears you can push through and just try and tell yourself you're going to try first. And so when I was writing this note, I was thinking about how I learned to trust myself. And ultimately, what really helped me to trust myself was listening to just myself. And it's like... I'm, I used to listen, of course, to parents, to pe to your peers, to people older than you, to people, in anybody. You know, you're so used to taking it in. So it's like I decided to just sit still, 
listen to myself and trust my gut, trust my intuition. It's been so many times where self-trust has literally saved me because I listen to my own intuition. Like, Not everyone has as much wisdom as you think they do. Like you can gain wisdom from yourself is what you have to realize. And that's how you get to self-trust. And it's by practicing listening to yourself. Try it one time. The more you start to do it, the more you feel confident in yourself and have this self-trust in yourself because you're thinking like, okay, I made these decisions before. I can make these decisions again. I can do it again. And if If I fail, I will learn and I will be okay. You start to take on that mindset because it's like, yes, I failed so many times at doing shit. And yes, and it wasn't the best outcome, but I couldn't stay down. I couldn't beat myself up too much. That's one thing I will say my mom taught me is whenever she made a mistake, I noticed she always say, oh, well, I know now. And that's what I've started using. And that's what I've been using. So that may be why I never really had a hard time with quote unquote failures or making mistakes because I looked at it like, okay, oh, well, I know now. And I applied that even to my toxic relationships when I went through it, the same thing twice, just with different people, just with one that I love more than the other, but they were both toxic. And going through that, I realized like, okay, I know now. And so I was able to keep going, going and loving again. It's like I use my own wisdom from the my own cho- choices that I made, which helped me to build my self trust, which helped me to have self assurance, self assurance, which helped me to be more confident and to add to my self confidence. All right. The next reason why you may not have self confidence and how you can have it is. I talked about this a little before, but if you were criticized growing up, okay, so one of the main things that I come across some people that were criticized a lot growing up is that they were expected to be perfect. If you were expected to be perfect and not make any mistakes, you're going to be a little scared to actually try as you get older because you expect yourself to be perfect. And so... If you never had anyone telling you any good things about you, really, no affirmations, nothing like that, just them telling you what you can do better or what you should be doing or how you need to be perfect. If that's all you witnessed and that's all you saw and it's all you were told, then you carry that into your adult age and you start to portray that and you don't try anything unless you think you're going to just really really be good at it other things like really branching out there and reaching your full potential you're not going to do it because you're expecting it to be perfect you have to allow yourself to grow it's not about being perfect and getting it right the first time it's about trying and becoming better at something so allow yourself to become better with doing something don't expect yourself to be perfect that's where The confidence, the lack of self-confidence comes in when you think about it. Okay, you're thinking like, I need to be able, I need to have the self-confidence to do something first. And I don't feel like I can do it. But what if you tried? You have to kind of like reverse your mindset and think, okay, I may not know how to do this certain thing or I may not know this, but let me try. Just like with any job you've gone out with, gone out for, or any job, new job you started. You may have started like, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, but you know, you needed the money. So you tried and you push yourself out there and you did it and you learned. You may not have gotten it perfect at first. You may have made some mistakes along the way, but you learned. And now you're probably like the best at it because you put it in that work and that years and years of practice applied it with everything. Just like when you were riding a bike, when you were a kid, you weren't confident you can do it, but you knew it would be fun. You see all the other kids riding their bikes. You wanted to do it. You knew, you knew it'd be fun. You're like, I want to do this. And that's, and I'm going to get into that part is also about having that goal in mind to make you really be confident and make you really try. But think about it, It's like if you're riding a bike and you really wanted to learn. You fell off a lot of times, got a lot of bruises, a lot of scratches. You didn't know what the hell you were doing, but you kept trying. You kept going. And now you can do it. And it's like you don't forget. Once you learn how to ride a bike, you don't forget. You're confident that you can do it because you tried. And so... You have to get out that mind frame that you're going to be perfect at something at first. You're not. And so 
you have to believe there's room for growth. That's what I wanted to add. You have to believe there's room for growth because you can't expect yourself to always get it right and perfect, but you can expect yourself to perfect. You can expect yourself to perfect it is what I'm trying to say. And this goes into, you know, fear keeping you from being self-confidence. And it's because you're possibly afraid of failing. And so with failures, I'm going to talk about failures. Now, I talked about just a moment ago how you're expected to be perfect and criticized and how you're afraid of failure. Now, let's talk a little more about failure. And so if you're possibly afraid of failing, it may be because of the relationship you have with failing failing and what it means to you and how you internalize it deeply. If your internalized failure is being, well, if your internalized failing is being a failure, then you're going to look at it as something being wrong with you. And so think about it. If you feel like something is wrong with you, if you fail, you're not going to try new things because you don't want to be reminded of that. You don't want to be reminded that, okay, I'm a failure. I failed at something. So you just don't try. So if you're afraid of being a failure, you're not going to try because you don't want to have to feel that pain of failing at something. So what if you actually changed your relationship with failing and failure? And instead of looking at it as something being wrong with you, look at it as a way for you to grow. Look at it as something that's going to add to your wisdom, which adds to your self-trust, which adds to your self-assurance. Do you see how where I'm going with it? And so... I don't expect anyone that's that's ever afraid of failing or ever afraid of being a failure to just really just like just jump out all of a sudden and be, you know, try things. But I can say what you could do is start trying little by little, you know, just like I said, with the turtle coming out the shell, do a little, a little, a little. Until you slowly start coming out. And each time you feel like you're triggered when you come out. Or you're afraid of something. Something happens. Reflect upon it. Journal about it. And see why you're feeling this way. What's this roadblock going on here? And then work past it. And another thing that can do with fear. Is if you're afraid of what people will think or say about you. If you actually try something. So that fear that's based in that. And what people are going to say about you. Everywhere I read, it said, just stop giving a damn about what people say. Okay, that's simple to say. But I want to get a little deeper with, you know, not being afraid of what people would think or say about you. Because it's much more than just not caring. What it is, is that you already maybe have the dialogue in your head that something is wrong with you. It's starting with you first. More than likely... You already thought these thoughts about yourself that you're a failure, that you look stupid when you do this, or you look dumb when you try to do that, or you can't dance, or you can't, whatever it is, every little thing it is, or you can't speak right. You may have had these thoughts about yourself first. And so you're afraid that everyone else is going to have those same thoughts that you have about yourself. So, how do you work that? Change your thoughts about yourself first. Once again, you can either journal. Me, my journal is in my head. I'm not going to lie. Most of the time, that's how I work through a lot of things. I'm very, very, very introspective. And I work with my internally with my head. Some things I take notes on. But for you, if you, some people have problems with that. Journal it out. Journal out all the things that you feel about yourself that you want to change. And that you know you have a negative loop about it or you a belief about it. So once you work to actually change that and you accept it, you don't have to exactly change what you feel is wrong with you, but you can learn to accept it and be okay with it. Once you learn to accept it, you really don't give a damn what people think about it because it's like, I'm good. <laughs> whatever you say, whatever. And it's like with me, I know I had a speech problem. I've had a speech problem from the time that I was a little girl. I kid you not. How I'm talking now, oh my gosh, so much better. I need my best friend here. She would tell y'all, Kendall used to talk so damn fast. Nobody understood her. And it's because I was, I think it's because I was an ADHD. I think I had it even when I was younger. And it was just diagnosed in my adulthood. But 
I used to talk so fast. And she was the only one that used to hear and understand what I said. And I used to stumble. I used to stutter a lot. Sometimes you make me catch it up, but I don't care anymore. It's like, I know this. I've accepted this. It's okay. I'm not perfect. But I still can do good work. And I do. <laughs> That's the affirmation I tell myself. I do good work still. And it's like, I can just have more compassion for myself. And you can do the same. It's like, you know, you're not meant to be perfect. You're meant to just be authentic. And that's what I start realizing. Like, this is just me and what I have an issue with. And it's okay. I'm still going to get in here and I'm still do my talks. And if I say, if I stumble on the word, I may just edit it out if I can. Or say, excuse me, what I'm trying to say and keep it going. And people laugh, ha ha. I realize that people that do that have a problem with it. It's because of their own projections, their own feelings, their own secondhand embarrassment. Is if you will, it's like they're embarrassed for me because they know they couldn't do what I do because they'll be too embarrassed. But they don't have to put those feelings on me. I don't. It's like a block. Once you accept yourself, it's like a block. What they what they say and do is like, okay, that's how you feel. I don't, and you leave it at that and you keep going. That's how you build the self confidence up. Okay. Well, that's one way. I keep saying it's how, but it all really goes hand in hand. If you, if you really look at it, as I was writing these notes, I realized this all kind of circles. It's all like a full circle. It all comes around together. Like you build a self trust, you build a self assurance, and it comes and it and it builds into your self confidence. So it all goes hand in hand if you think about it. Okay, so now I'm gonna get into some things you can actually do. To build your self-confidence. I went over some things that may be causing you to not be self-confident. Those are like the main things. It could be some other things. But from what my experience and from the woman I coach. And I realized that those are the main things that could be stopping you. So work through those things. Now some things that you could actually do. Whether you have the other things I mentioned or not. That's blocking you. Try these if you want to build your self-confidence. So. Something that really worked for me, that make it work for you, is thinking of what you really, really, really want. And this can actually go back to the bike analogy I made earlier to where you're that kid and you know you're not really confident you can ride a bike, but you know you really want to do it because you see all the other kids doing it, you're excited about it, but you really, really want to do it. So what you do, you get out there, you keep falling, hurting yourself, and you keep trying, but you keep on trying to ride that bike until you learn and the training wheels come off and you got it. That means you have actually worked to it because you have something you really, really want. So apply that to today and presently. Think of what you really want and then think of the steps you have to do to get there. Convince yourself of what you really, really want out of life, period. Focus on going after it. Don't focus on what don't focus so much on if you fail. Focus on, I'm going to keep trying because this is what I really, really want. I'm not going to stop until I get it. Be tenacious. And think of how it will feel to have it. That's something that I, oh, this works wonders for me. I guess me being a Pisces and being imaginative, I don't know. But I daydream a lot. I think about exactly what I want, how I want it, how it's going to feel to have it, how it's going to feel to be there, and I work towards it. That's really why I'm on here doing these videos and doing this stuff because I realized IG wasn't playing with me no more. They didn't want just no tweets. They want videos. And so I'm like, okay, if I want to make this a job, Kendall, you got to put yourself out there. You got to be on camera. You got to talk to these people. They got to know who you are. You can't just keep writing and posting tweets. And I, you want to get, um, you know, paid to do what you love to do. You got to coach some women. And so that's what I do because it's like I had to slowly believe in myself. And I realized, okay, I really, really want to make this a career. So what do I have to do? And I've made some mistakes on the way to this. And I'm still making mistakes. But it's like I'm learning. It's becoming better and better. Like my OGs, if you know how my Instagram used to look, nothing like it looked now. And it's like. Because I've given myself a chance. I'm actually giving myself a chance to grow. Because I see the end goal of what I really, really, really want. So whatever it is that you want. And you feel like you don't have the confidence to get it. 
Think about how it feels to have it and the steps you got to have to get there. And then think about what I said earlier about failure and failing, failing. It doesn't make you, you know, a failure or a fuck up or whatever you may call yourself when you fail. It's just, okay, look at it as a learning experience. Get up and keep going. And also on the way to that, what's really, really important is to... When you make the small steps toward it and you do well, celebrate each little win. Actually, no win is too small. Celebrate each little thing, each thing you do on the way to it. Congratulate yourself. Pat yourself on the back. Affirm yourself. You may not have anybody else around you to congratulate you, but you think about how far you come and like, I did it. And that's what I do. And that's what really builds my self-confidence. It's called self-confidence, confidence in yourself. Like people can add to it, but now that you're an adult, you got to be the one to actually provide yourself with everything that you need. Everybody else is just a bonus. And plus, why limit yourself to what somebody else says and when they congratulate you? Congratulate yourself right now because you want to because of what you did. It's been plenty of YouTube videos posted I've put up that I was proud of and I loved. I love the edits. I love the thumbnails of the YouTube video. I love the post on my Instagram, love how I worded things. I loved my, I loved everything about it, but it didn't do well. But it's like, that's all right. I loved it and keep going. Congratulate yourself because you're doing so much better than what you were doing before. You're actually making the steps forward. Pat yourself on the back every step of the way that will slowly build your confidence and help you to keep going. I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying the journey is just going to be lightweight and you breeze right through everything. That's why it's important to congratulate yourself each step and to not look at your failures as you being a failure. That's it's really a really it's all about having the right mindset And that's really what a lot of things is, really, when you think about it. Like, everything is based off your mind. Your mind is very, very strong. And how you think is how your world will be around you when you think about it. And that's why I am a mindset and intuitive coach. I do coaching, by the way. Um, You can check out the link. It should be in the description. But, yes, I do one-on-one coaching. But... That's why I decided to be a mindset and intuitive coach because I realized a lot of the things that I teach and that I've learned and that I know all started with me changing my mindset around it, around a lot of things. And so the only thing that's stopping you from being more self-confident is, you know, not knowing what mindset to have to get there and how to get there. You're still stuck in the same loop that you've been playing over and over in your head. And I'm here to help you get out of that loop. (laughs) And so, and also with you celebrating your small steps, I've learned that it puts you in a better mood to try and keep going. So when you're celebrating, like say if you just never celebrated anything that you did, any small win or big win or any win period, anything that you did well, you didn't celebrate it. And you just looked at how you can do it better. Are you going to be in the best mood to keep going? Are you going to get tired and like, I can't do this shit no more? You know, just be real with yourself. So celebrate it. No matter if nobody else say, I know it's somebody that I was coaching before and she feels like that she's a fraud if she celebrates herself because nobody else celebrated. But it's like you got to get in the habit of knowing that you are enough and what you say about you is enough. Nobody else has to validate it. And it sounds so strange. It's nice to have validation. Don't get me wrong. It is nice to have it, but you can't depend on it. Depending on it, it's going to leave you without, and you don't want that. And so you have to get out of the mindset that you are not enough and what you say about you is not enough unless somebody else is confirming it. If what you say goes, and you have to keep telling yourself that if you make it a daily habit, whether you believe it or not, like whether you fully believe the things that you're telling yourself, if you know that that's what you want to have as a belief system about yourself, tell yourself every day. Until it gets ingrained in your head and in your body's remembers you saying this instead of your body and mind remembering what someone else told you about you. Like, I was scared as shit to do coaching and to do what I'm doing here now. Scared as shit. But I knew what I wanted. And I knew that I had to make steps to get there. And so, 
affirmation for me every day is that I am good at what I do. I am good at what I do. Even while I'm doing it, it can be something that I've worded to someone that I'm coaching. And I'll be and in my head, I'm like, I did that. I'm good at what I do. Why like how I said that? I'm good at what I do. And you and once you keep telling yourself that it's building your confidence because it's like you're realizing I'm good at what I do. And when roadblocks come up or when shit happens, like a uh, wrench is thrown into like something and I feel like, damn, I still don't dwell on the few bad comments or the few bad moments or the, or the few failures or the few things where I weren't my best because it's, it's few. It's not a lot of times that it's happened. So I look at it as a learning experience. Okay, how can I be better? Let's go. I'm still good at what I do, but I'm going to be even better at what I do if I take this experience and apply it to my wisdom. And I've gotten better and better and better and better. That's how you work that. Let's see. What else can you do? I wanted to say some more about failure. I took some more notes about failure that I really want to put in here. So... Worst case scenario, you do fail. Doesn't mean you give up. So I've learned to take failures, as I said before, is learning experiences. And what helped me to not be afraid to fail is that I'm looking at it like, okay, what am I going to learn? I get curious about what I'm going to learn. Not scared about what could possibly happen. I change it to, okay, I'm going to be curious about the new experience, the new lesson that I'm going to learn. How am I going to grow today? What's going to happen for me to know better so that I can do better? So change it from, I'm afraid to fail to, I'm curious about what I'm going to learn. Say that with me. I just thought of that on the spot and I like it. See, congratulate myself. (laughs) Instead of being afraid of failing Be curious about what you're going to learn. Be curious about how you're going to grow, how you're going to be better. And look at it like that. You can't fail. You know, you can just grow and do better. Don't even look at it as like that. With that, you're letting it add to your confidence and add to your wisdom. And it's going to heighten your belief in yourself because you're knowing now what you didn't know before. And so on the way there, you can give yourself pep talks and affirmations. Like I say, you know, I'm doing, I'm doing well. I'm good at what I do. I like how it says it. Like I just did now. Like it's like, this is something that I literally do. I just wanted to say it out loud so that you can see how I work and do every day. Like usually I, I would say it in my head, like, damn, I like that. But I decided to say it out loud. So you see, that's how it really works. And I also want to add and talk about looking at failure or rejection as alignment. And that has really helped me as well. Although in the moment, the shit can hurt like hell. I ain't going to lie. Rejecting from anything, just not not just not guys or men or relationships, but like a job you wanted. Um anything you wanted and you didn't get it. I'm learning to look at it as alignment now. And I'm going to tell you a little quick story. So when I graduated college in 2014, I was all excited. Like, okay, I'm about to get a job in my field. I'm going to do social work. I'm going to apply for all the jobs. And I want to work for the state, make some good money. Let's go. Child, y'all. All them jobs said no. All of them. And I remember being so crushed, like, and I remember being depressed. That was my first time really in my, I guess I would say adulthood, like in my twenties, really feeling depressed. It was like them jobs didn't come through. I was staying with my mom, sleeping on a twin bed still. I was, granted, I was only like 27, six. I wasn't that old, but you know, I wanted so much for myself. And then I felt like, you know, I didn't get it. And I felt so rejected everywhere. And I couldn't find, you know, a good job. And so what ended up happening, I worked for, I worked for FedEx for a minute and making some money. And I went to a job paying more and I was able to move out my mom's house found. I was working in a call center, making some pretty good money. But nothing ever came up in my field. But looking back, I'm so glad it didn't because I don't think those jobs were ever really for me. Working in like working for someone was ever really for me. Now I do this. 
And it's like, I feel like this is always the dream and a journey, but I just had to go through a few things to get there. I was still going to those toxic relationships and still building myself up. And so it's like now I'm at this point and I was meant to go through all of that before. It was alignment. It may have felt like it was rejection, but it was really alignment and redirection. I know you heard that saying rejection is redirection and it's so true. And it's a right to feel hurt in the moment. But when you get back up and you start working towards your goal and still trying to do something, tell yourself like, okay, that must have not been meant. I don't know anything that's not meant. This must be the road I'm supposed to take. I don't know what's going to happen later down the road, but I got to keep going because you keep your mind on what it is you really want as well. And so that really, really helped me. It's changing how I looked at rejection because that can also cause you to lack self-confidence because if you feel like you're rejected before, you're going to be rejected again. You shouldn't try because you're scared to try because you don't like the feeling of feeling rejected. But once you change your mindset around it, you're not so afraid of it because you're like, okay, I know what this means. It doesn't mean this anymore. It doesn't mean anything negative about me. It just means it's not meant. And when you get your mindset on that, you're not so afraid to move forward. And it adds to your self-confidence because you're like, I know that I'm still good at what I do. Then I had to think about it. It was like it was so many jobs telling me no because I didn't have the experience I felt like I could do the job, but they didn't know nothing about me. So why would I take it personal that they didn't hire me? They didn't know me. They don't know how I work. They don't know what I can do. They just guessed at it. They made an assumption. And so why would I take their assumptions and make it true for me? Like, okay, I must not be good at what I do. That's not how you work that, girlfriends. No, no. And everybody else that's listening. That's not how you work that. <laughs> And so, and changing your inner di dialogue, um, your inner dialogue is what really, really matters. And that's what a lot of us I've already said is, but not believe you're going to be perfect and you can keep going even if you don't get it right. Just keep going and celebrate the small wins. Um, some other things to help you build your self-confidence. Some other mentions before I go into body confidence is doing what you love. Start doing a lot of more things you love. Not the things you have to do, but the things you are good at. Do the things you actually feel you're good at and do a good job at and do better. And then also don't be afraid to learn something new. If it's something you've always wondered about, learn something new and see yourself get better at it. Because it's like, I want to learn this because I like it and it's so cool. And then see yourself grow. Like sometimes I don't think we stop and realize how much we've grown and learned. Like... It's so many times where you're like, oh my God, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. And then you know what the hell you're doing all of a sudden because you, you stay diligent and you learned it. Let that grow into your confidence and realize I've done some tough things before. I can do tough things. I can learn how to do them if I don't know how to. So you got to have that mindset about it. You can be scared, but do the shit scared anyway. Try anyway. And then you'll slowly lose the fear as you go promise you i promise you you will and what i like to do listen to music that gets me going like i love me some bad bitch music because i love their confidence i love listening to other women that i know have confidence and whether it's watching them on tv seeing how they do it's like watching them is how i learn to portray it and learn that i can do it too because i like how they do it and female rappers just do it for me Love their confidence. Love, love it, love it. So I listen to that and it helps me build my inner confidence. I listen to the actual confidence in their lyrics and how they rap and how they write and how they do so good at that. I'm like, okay, that is confidence. And I get out and perform confidence. I look at that. Um, Be your own number one fan. That's another way. And I said that before. Um, I'm just going over a few little key notes at the end that I wrote. Being your own number one fan is definitely, definitely recommended. Like, pat yourself on the back. Congratulate yourself. If nobody else do, congratulate yourself. Um, create healthy habits for yourself. Now, this, okay, I'll just say what I have. Like, eating healthier, because um, eating healthier can help you have more energy. Getting proper rest, getting exercising, meditation for calmness, journaling daily. Like, pick up healthy daily things that you do to help you with that. That also builds confidence because it builds self-trust and you have a routine going. And it's something that you know and you're building and know how to do. 
um, the eating healthier and the eating right and getting all your rest, that's just helping you to have more energy and to be in a better mood so that you can feel more confident. Um, journaling and self-reflecting helps you to become more in tune with yourself and understand yourself better. Look at it as a way to get out all your thoughts and feelings. And that's it for um, just self-confidence overall. Let's get into some body confidence here. So this is what the rest of the podcast is going to be about. It's not going to be, I'm not going to hold y'all long, much longer. It's going to be about a good 10, 15 minutes, just some general things to help you with body confidence. So basically what I said before, like confidence is basically feeling assured about yourself. So what has made you feel unassured about your body? What has made you feel like is something wrong with your body? Because me personally, for so long, I thought something was wrong with the way I looked, with my body, with my fat, with the way I'm shaped. And like from the time I can remember, my mom always had something to say about my weight, my body, how I looked, all of that. And so that's where my, you know, my issues with my body came from. And it's like if someone is, think about it, if you're a child and you look to your parents for everything and you're looking to them and all they're telling you is what's wrong with your body, of course you're going to grow up and be self-conscious about it. There's no way around it. Or if someone bullied you or is something in your childhood or high school, like say if your mom didn't say things about your body, but you dealt with bullying alone in high school and had nobody to reassure you. You came home and tell them about what was going on with you. So you were dealing with it alone. If you were dealing with that trauma alone, that's still trauma. It doesn't have to have come exactly from your parents talking about you. So this applies to all of that. If you felt like you dealt with anything dealing with your body and how it looks alone and you were, and so that means you weren't told what to believe and what was true. You were just told the things that somebody else told you about it. And so when you're sitting with that and you're believing all that about you, it's going to dampen your self-esteem and confidence. There's no lie about it. And how I broke out of that is as I got older I started changing the dialogue in my head, so to speak. And I went back to when my mom used to make fun of me. I not went back to her, but I went back mentally, emotionally. And I thought about how she used to talk to me and treat me. And I first of all told myself, okay, you were a kid. You ate what she fed you. So if it was anybody's fault, it was hers. Two, maybe your body was different than your sister's. Yes, they were smaller, but maybe somehow your body was different and it held on to the weight. Or it, it, anything could have been different in my body because we were all eating the same thing. It was not like I had I separate meals where I was just eating by myself. So my weight just happened to be what it is. And I went back emotionally and I held myself and told myself, you know, there was nothing ever wrong with you. I'm sorry that, you know, our mom can make us feel good about ourselves. I'm sorry that she wasn't emotionally available to be there for you and how you felt about yourself. Like, this is all I'm telling my inner child and like just telling myself and telling her like, you know, but it's OK. Girl, I like how you look. And I imagine my inner child telling me I'm proud of how you've grown into your body and how you're proud of it now. And I am. And it took a, this takes a lot of work. Like what I just said, I said it quickly, but you're really going to have to sit with yourself and go back emotionally to whenever someone makes you feel bad about yourself and about your body and how you look. It could be any little thing. And if you don't quite get over it, it's okay. Like some things I've grown to accept my body pretty much as a whole, but I don't like my arms still. If y'all have watched some of my other things, that's something that I feel like I'm going to have for a lifetime. And I feel like it's okay. It's one thing. I can still wear things to make me feel more confident. And that goes into what helped me to feel confident in my body. I started learning what looks good on me. And I started dressing how I want and what looks good on me. Wearing my hair, makeup how I want. Things that make me feel beautiful. If... Like, whatever it was, like, I just got into lashes maybe about four years ago or so. Not much, not much longer ago. And 
I used to be worried about it because a lot of people around me were saying, oh, I don't like when girls wear all them long lashes. And so I never tried it. But then one day I was just like, I'm going to try it. I think I seen my sister had on some smaller ones. I'm like, oh, okay, she got some small ones on. They look pretty good. So I started small. My younger sister, I seen that she would wear them sometimes. And she wears sometimes smaller, sometimes like lavish like this. I just got into these. But it's like I started doing things, not worried about what people were going to say. And just did it for me to see how I liked it on me. And it's not about if it's in or what people say about it. It's about how it makes you feel. Like, how does you, you know, wearing and doing what you do make you feel? Do these clothes make you feel good? Do you feel good in it? If you feel good in it, it's going to exude confidence. And something else that really helped me to build my body confidence was looking at other women bodies that are shaped like mine. That was like the number one thing. Because it's like it representation really matters. I followed some people on Instagram. If I'm scrolling through a for you and I see somebody that's, that's my size, thick and styling and profiling with confidence, wearing the clothes cute, but she got rolls and she ain't caring. Instant follow. <laughs> Instant follow. Especially if I like their personality, attitude, and they got the pretty, I call them like the pretty fat girl like me. Yes, pretty fat girl. Yes. I'm following because it's like, I need more of that feeding into it. It's like the more of the positive things I fed into me, the more the negative shit pushes way out. Like it couldn't survive anymore because I'm like, no, I'm seeing women looking like me doing a damn thing. I can do it too. And so representation really matters. That's why I'm actually getting out here more. I have my try on hauls for plus size and I'm always making sure I'm looking cute on camera because I'm like, look, I got to represent for the plus size. Like I see what they did for me and my body confidence. I'm going to do the same for some other girl that's also feeling like that. Because it's like, when you think about it, the only people that got a problem with your weight and how you look is everybody else. You don't have to be the one with a problem with it. You don't have to have an issue with it. Now, if you do, that's fine. And you want to lose weight for yourself because you feel like you can be smaller. You want to be healthier. That is totally fine. I'm not knocking saying, hey, don't try to lose weight. Don't try to be healthy. Just just no. Because I am healthy. I get yearly checkups because so many illnesses run in my family. So, yes, I make sure, yeah, I may be fat. But best believe I make sure I'm healthy. That's one thing that I advocate. It's like, yes, I may be fat, but I'm going to be healthy. I'm making sure all of my levels are right. No high cholesterol, no high blood pressure, none of that. You can be fat and healthy. So it's like it's dealing away with the stigmas wrapped around it. It's what I feel like. And it's like the more I've done it and the more I surround myself with the positivity, the more confident it helped me to feel. It was like an addition to the work that I was already doing. Like, no, I wasn't dependent on somebody else to make me feel confident, but I knew the journey I was on. I needed to surround myself with positivity. Why would I surround myself with people like my mom that just talk about weight? And another thing with that, I want to add, as I got older, I started speaking up for my damn self. I let her know that she's not going to talk about my weight or anybody else's in my presence. I let her know that it's not okay. And she stopped saying shit. She don't really say it. No, what she say about other people and stuff, some things you just can't, they're just going to have their own view of it and their own projections. And like I said, it's secondhand embarrassment because they feel like, okay, if I was that fat, I wouldn't like it. Or they just know to make fun of people like that or think something wrong. They make it wrong, but you don't have to make it wrong. And so... That's really all I get for the body confidence. I may have some more that I want to speak on. And of course, it'd be on my Patreon. Anything bonus to anything on here that I want to say would be on my Patreon. I usually do um, about two or three episodes extra a week on my Patreon. And also, I do mindset and intuitive coaching. It starts off at just $30 a month. You can cancel it before the end of the month and you'll get your coaching for that whole month. And the $30 one is just for basically coaching in the Patreon Messenger, which has been really helpful. I have people that have been with me for months, many months, and we talk back and forth like girlfriend chat. Like we're chatting back and forth, but I'm only I'm helping you to, you know, heal and go through some things and work through some things. And I'm using my intuitiveness to help you through it. And I have the $80 tier, which is for coaching calls. You get one hour coaching call a month. Plus all of the messaging coaching. And you can cancel anytime. Like you can join the beginning of the month and cancel it too. And you'll still have me for the whole month. And starts off for $30. And I have my podcast episodes on there. And I have some different exercises we do sometimes. Like we did shadow work exercise. 
And I also have a tier that starts off at $10 where you get half off all of my ebooks. I have three ebooks, three regular books out. You can get half off of them. So check it out. Check out my Instagram as well. But that's all I got, y'all, for this podcast episode. This is one of my favorites. I think I said it all the time. But I really enjoyed just giving this information. And yeah, I hope it helped y'all. So until the next podcast episode, girlfriends, peace out.